What's going on, everyone? Last year, Stanley Johnson was a real standout for the Lakers, right? He was a free agent that the Lakers signed, uh, gave him like sort of a bit of a tryout, and he immediately made an impact and became a staple in the Lakers rotation. Well, this season or this offseason, the Lakers end up trading Stanley Johnson as part of the Patrick Beverly deal to kind of free up a roster spot and, you know, move off of THT. Also, freeing up some cap space uh, to give them even more for this upcoming season. But Stanley Johnson is really a piece that the Lakers could really use, right? Especially right now, sizable wing that can play both forward spots. He isn't the greatest shooter, but still, he was a free, cheap option that could, you know, guard the, the Kawhi Leonard's, the Paul George's, the Kevin Durant's, you know, the bigger, more sizable wings. And Stanley Johnson would be a welcome addition, but because they traded him, and even though he was bought out, the Lakers had no way of re-signing him. They couldn't do it because of certain rules due to the CBA, where you can't uh, sign a player that was traded if you were the last one to trade him. And, well, the San Antonio Spurs ended up signing Stanley Johnson, which opened the door, potentially, for a Stanley Johnson return, which many people would love to have. Because now, if the Spurs end up waiving Stanley Johnson, now the Lakers weren't the last team to have him prior to the waiving that they would be able to then uh, re-sign Stanley Johnson. But another alternative that may be one of the reasons the Spurs even signed Stanley Johnson to begin with, uh, based on just kind of rumors, we don't know for certain, but that's kind of what all trade rumors are, right? All trade speculations are just murmurs and just talks about, you know, oh, maybe this will happen or maybe this will happen or there are discussions. But we do know the Lakers and the Spurs have had several discussions about potential trades. And one of the trades that the Lakers have talked about is, you know, Josh Richardson, Doug McDermott, Josh Richardson, or Jakob Pertl. The Lakers are currently shopping Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, and a first-round pick to various teams to try to get the best package in return. Now, Jakob Pertl makes a lot of sense, especially with Anthony Davis's injury, right? Anthony Davis being out, you get a guy like Jakob Pertl who could come in, play the center spot, a low post threat uh, that you could dump the ball down to. He's an excellent passer for a guy of his size. You know, he's in the Spurs system, so he's an unselfish guy that can move the ball. Great interior defender. Um, you know, Richardson, he's a, a KCP type player, right? Got good wingspan. Uh, not the biggest body, but still, he's a, would be a solid 3 and D shooting guard that could really help and kind of round out the roster. But even if you did do this deal, Josh Richardson, yes, he could play the four in spots, but it's kind of like another Walker playing the playing the three. My apologies, the three spot, right? But he would be kind of like another Walker playing the three. He's not really sizable for the three spot. He's more suited for the two spot, right? The two guard, but he could play the three in spots if you needed him to. Well, if the Lakers could get Stanley Johnson in the trade back as an add-on, then that would make a lot of sense, right? So Josh Richardson, Yaka Pertl, and Stanley Johnson could be the three pieces coming back for Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, and maybe you throw in like a JTA or like a Damian Jones or something like that, especially if you're getting a center. Or they could even do, you know, uh, a McDermott and a Josh Richardson and then also bring in Stanley Johnson. And it would make sense for San Antonio because the Stanley Johnson signing, if nothing else, was a little strange and a little odd. It was like, why Stanley Johnson for the Spurs uh, at this point? Are they just trying to test guys out? Or are they just trying to, you know, because they're a tanking team. They don't care. They're, you know, but, you know, you can make an argument. Stanley Johnson is young, right? He is a piece, a sizable wing. Like maybe they could, they're trying to see if there's something there. You know, he's really cheap, makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. But it also would make sense that you're trying to work out deals and negotiations with the Lakers to try to recoup some assets and unload some of these guys. If the Lakers were like, hey, Stanley Johnson is a free agent, we'll give you one of the first round picks if you go get Stanley Johnson, sign him to a vet minimum deal, and then add him to the package, and that could be something that could happen. Now, you may be thinking, well, then why hasn't it happened yet? Well, it may have already have happened if Anthony Davis didn't get injured, right? So it happened, and then like, what, the next day, uh, Anthony Davis ends up getting hurt. So that becomes something that now do you try to go get Yaka Pearl, right? Maybe San Antonio wants more for Yaka than maybe a Doug McDermott, Josh Richardson. That could be something. Maybe they had another deal worked out or they could just be still in the negotiation stages. And the Spurs sign Stanley Johnson because maybe they're interested in him, and but they wouldn't mind having him be an add-on for the Lakers 
if a deal was potentially to get done. Again, it's all just speculation, just like anything else, you know, so this may or may not be a thing, but it does fit and it would kind of give the Lakers all the pieces they need because you'd get a, you know, three and D shooting guard that could play the small forward. If you need to in pinches, you get a center that could come in and either start alongside Anthony Davis, come off the bench and back up Anthony Davis. And then you could have LeBron play the three if you wanted to. Right. So now uh, Stanley Johnson, he's your backup three rather than your starting three. Uh, so you have him backing it up. Uh, LeBron plays the three of Yaka play the five. AD play the four, uh, then you still have that rotation of winning Gabriel and Thomas Bryant. Thomas Bryant could come in, back up Yaka Pirtle, winning Gabriel could come in, back up Anthony Davis. Now you always have like that hustle player, that shooter uh, type player next to each other. That could really help. And then your three spot would be LeBron James and Stanley Johnson. And then you have, you know, uh, uh, your guard lineup is Russell Westbrook, Dennis Schroeder at the one spot. And then you'd have, you know, Josh Richardson, uh, uh, Walker, and you'd have Austin Reeves that could round out your two and three spot if you needed to. Also, Stanley Johnson could play the four. Uh, so you'd have like this nice rotation, but you just get a big wing that could defend that already worked for you in the past and was a very solid defender. I mean, seriously. You know, that's one of the big things that you got with Stanley Johnson. Uh, the three-point shooting was kind of lacking. Um, he's not an elite or great three-point shooter by any means. But if he's just an add-on that you're getting in a trade, it, you, that you're doing anyway, then who cares, right? And some people might even look at it, well, you traded him to begin with. Now you're trading for him again. You're not trading for Stanley Johnson. Stanley Johnson was just like the cherry on top. You're trading for the cake, which is Yaka Pirtle and Josh Richardson or Yaka Pirtle and McDermott or, you know, Richardson and McDermott, whichever of those combination of those three, you're trading for that. That's your piece of cake, right? You're just trying to get that added cherry that you let go that you could use. You're getting that for essentially free. It's not like you're adding more to go get Stanley Johnson. You know, if they were adding another first or something like that, then yeah. Like, it's like, okay, that's silly. That Like, that was ridiculous. You let him go just to go give up another asset to get him back that doesn't make any sense but no that's not what this would be this would be uh hey we're gonna give you a first round pick but we want you to do this for us so we could get this player back you know and you were gonna do that deal regardless so the spurs are just kind of doing you a solid maybe you throw in you know a, a second round pick or maybe you take off some of the protection right so like let's say it's top 10 protected you know spurs want you know, top five protected or something like that. And they're like, okay, well, we'll make it top five protected, but we want you to go sign Stanley Johnson and then we'll make a trade for Stanley Johnson too. Like we want you to add Stanley Johnson and his contract, you know, like 1.8 million or whatever. So it's not like it's, it's going to make a huge difference. And like I said, you could, if you need to, you could throw in a JTA, you could throw in a Damian Jones, you know, you could throw in pieces that you need to, to go make that work uh, if you needed to. And you could just do an even swap Spurs. They're a tanky team. They don't care. And worst case, if, if you don't end up trading with the Lakers, you try them out. If it works, great. If not, you wave them, and then maybe the Lakers could re-sign them, right? Because at that point, then you'd be in a position to be able to re-sign them. So it, it is very interesting, and it is at, at the at the worst. It's a very curious kind of thing that the Spurs did because it's like, really? Like, why, why did they bring in Stanley Johnson out of all teams, out of all scenarios? Like, yeah, he's young, but he's not like that young, and it's like you have a good young core already that you're trying to, like, you know, build on and you're trying to tank you're trying to go get you know not that stanley johnson's gonna move the needle right it's not like stanley johnson's coming in and you know the, the spurs are gonna go from the worst team in the league to like one of the best teams in the league like that's not happening but it just it was it was like why you add in that piece uh and especially if you wave him you know the lakers are probably gonna try to sign him anyway so it's like oh well it makes sense if they signed him to try to get a little more out of the lakers that is something that could make a lot of sense. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think, like, yeah, if you can, that makes a lot of sense. Do that. Get, you know, Yaka Pirtle, Josh Richardson, Stanley Johnson, right? Or or Doug McDermott, whomever, right? Get a combination of those three. 
get Stanley Johnson as the add-on. That makes a lot of sense. Now you're off to races. Now you got your, you know, your sizable wing. You got your three and D shooting guard that can play the three spot if you need him to. And then you got your low post center that can kind of help while Anthony Davis is gone. Is that something you'd be interested in? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, good, bad, ugly, somewhere between, I'd love to hear them. Let me know down in the comment section below.